Any questions? Comments? I take that as a no. Okay. I think we got that. That's pretty clear. <clears throat> for factual. <laughs> Go over the flat feet again. It's just, um, it's just attached to the bottom text. What are you saying with flat feet? That would be, instead of being based on value, you would pay a flat amount per market. So everybody, everybody would pay the same amount. Everybody pays the same, which I like. Application, I like that option better. The question is, that's what I was doing. You think you're coming up different? Yeah. The question is, if that's a good idea, do y'all want to do that for the property tax? I'm sorry. You want to just collect a flat fee for your property tax or do you want to? Place that, you, that tax is placed on the bank. Yeah, I think that's a more fair way to do it. I think it's going to make it easier to get off the off the digest instead of the park. I mean, that's, that's the two options. The chairman is saying more for the flat than I think. The question I was raising is the concept of flat fee in fairness versus. And I agree. I, and I see what Clay's saying, but I think I think the I think the the tax value based on the value of the property, the tax based on the value of the property makes sense. But I mean, it's going to cost us the same whether we're responding to a smaller house or a, it, it is going to cost the same thing. But at the same time, that person's got a million dollar house. He's got a lot more money than that person's got a million dollar house. Well, that's where that's where I. Have an issue with it. To me, from the standpoint of a home, if it's a hundred and sixty thousand dollars home or if it's a million dollars home, it's somebody's home. It is. It's a total loss for them. So we're here to provide a service for fire, and it doesn't matter to me whether it's a million dollar home or a hundred thousand dollar home. I agree. I, I, I agree. And from a 
parcel standpoint, we also picked up because a lot of the responses that we have to go to are brush fires and all these other incidences that may not even have a structure involved in it. So if you look at it from a flat fee, then it's, to me, it's, it, that, that process seems to be just fair to everybody all the way across the board because everybody knows what they're having to pay additionally to get a higher level of service. Your, I think your insurance premium funds that you see comes from those private insurance companies based on premiums, i.e. tied to the bank. And they get that benefit from that side of it. I'm just making a Yeah, I, I just... I mean, tax lighting districts, you don't say, well, this house pays less for the street lights because it's... No, it's a, I think it's really maybe not a good idea. I just, I mean, my opinion is an issue. Um, I'm afraid, and, and this is just open in this case, I'm afraid that you got a hundred, well, let's take Stone Creek. Stone Creek's got garden homes in it that maybe $200,000. Well, it's as low as one of the Okay, so I'm using that example. Um, if you've got somebody there in Stone Creek that's got that $321,000 house and they're paying four hundred dollars I'm sorry, yeah, $414 for fire protection and $160,000 is paying $196,000. Does someone sitting there saying, I'm paying more so I demand more? In other words, pass up the burning house to get to my house because I'm paying more? You can make the same argument about roads. Should they have a better road in front of their house because they got more for this house? No, that's not the case. I mean, it's not the case. But it's not. It's the same thing as the factory. But all roads we treat equal and the same. We do. But they're paid for by property taxes. So if you got a million dollar house, you pay more for roads than if you got a hundred thousand dollars. Even though you've got the same road. I mean, I get that analogy. But I just. <clears throat> and we, I guess we've got to pass through that. I just feel like that if I know that I'm paying X amount of dollars per year for a higher level of fire service, and I know what that number is, it has nothing to do with the value of my piece of property. Um, I feel better about it, and I also feel like that most anybody else would. Is there any questions related to the calculations and the costs associated with these? Is any anything that you see that's invalid, something to consider? The only thing is I would also like to consider looking at and look I mean is if we're going to do a main station somewhere, if we're going to do renovations, we might as well put an EMS rank as well. Not as funded. You got six EMSs now. But if we're going to put, let's just say, for example, we have one four lounge, one of Venus, <coughs> one of Cotton, those are the three stations we use. If we're going to go in and renovate these stations, we might as well put an EMS headquarters there too. Then you have three in the hospital and three. <coughs> well, let me, if I can, let, let me, conversations that we've had with the hospital in, result, in, in regards to the zero response. In some cases, but when they would call for an ambulance, there was not an ambulance available. There were some areas where that was an issue. Um, they put on a sixth squad. They did have five squads. They put on a sixth squad, and it's stationed up in the Venus area now, working out of a commercial trailer or something up there, uh, which was eventually going to be in the Venus station. It cut that zero response time, I mean, almost that completely out. I mean, it made that one, that one squad made all the difference in the world. But, but from an EMS service, would we have a better service if we had three of them stationed in the hospital in three other locations? I would encourage you that if that is a consideration, that that be made part of the discussion. 
Association between the Commission and the SGMC. Because SGMC may say we've got our obligations and we're comfortable with that. Yeah, I was going to say, I think what you find now, they've got the one at Venus. I think they've got one at Lake Park. That they put the, basically that ambulance is stationed at Lake Park. And is there another There's one in Hayhire? One in Hayhire.
conversation with Danny and evaluating this, Danny said, preferable three, minimum two. First minimum. Yes. Just related to this. Yeah, yeah. What's the minimum? Well, I think we're all, and I'm sorry, but I think we're all always going to have to, as this community continues to grow, we're going to have to continue with the fact that we know we're going to have to give love to 911 because that demand on most folks is going to yeah. continue. Just the point I wanted to make is that this ripple in the pond is far reaching sure. and it, it has a financial impact on a number of services. Now, our 911 fees, how much is how much are there at this time? Um, because we do have the ability to increase those. Yeah, you're already funded. Yeah. It's pretty much set. You're, you're, you're not having to And you're already having to put money in 911 for the general fund. Because they're not covering the cost. Another cap is set by the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're kind of, I think, we're clear on the, on the financials. As, as I said, it's just a matter of multiplication based on the number of stations. Could we focus uh, a little bit and talk about the, the various options, not all making a, a decision, but where are you leaning? What do you like? What do you not like about these options? And in addition to that, I don't want y'all to think that these are all in loose. There are many options as there are ideas as, and decisions y'all want to make about what you do. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, my point is, I think from the go, you know, if we can make the numbers work and, and, and work with that, option two, to me, for the present time, <clears throat> is the option that's going to satisfy the needs that not only the citizens, but I believe that the commissioner as well is recognizing that if you're going to upgrade fire service, one station is not going to do it for you, to me. But the two station model, or actually three stations, is the, the best option. You're going to get three stations, and choosing those stations, even though they might not be your number one choice of where a station needs to be at, it's also the most viable choice because doing renovations <coughs> to them and that sort of thing and they're great I mean they're already good solid fire stations it's not an issue that, that it's that they're in a terrible location or anything like that and I'm going to come back to that district model again that we already had in place if they can kind of be command stations for your other volunteer stations the other uh, 17 <coughs> stations that's out there I just think it's I think that that's going to be the closest thing we're going to be able to get to. And, and if I may, the only, and I'm just not trying to be contrary, but from the fruit, one of the conversations we had before was you mentioned about how the volunteers would pay you guys to get there or they pay you guys to get back up to your charge. And we kind of advocate, hey, let's put the pay guys over the volunteers, which kind of perpetuate, could perpetuate that. I think what you're putting over them is a command officer. And he's the one that works that coordination about who is running the fire, if you want to call it that, who is managing that incident. Is that then you do have one person that's going to be the leader, and he everybody knows it. So the calls he make at, makes at the scene, that's the call. That's happening now. And, and you would uh, not necessarily. And you would, and just so I'm clear, so you would, if you did that, if we did option two. You want to have a command officer per district? Correct. So you can go to that piece that people have six more. Basically, they have six more command officer shift supervisors to those budget numbers. Mm -hmm. so that number. Now, also, we want to come back to what I mentioned earlier, if I can, the issue uh, that Mr. Pritchard had brought up earlier that I, had, in all honesty, had discounted. I'd like to get some input from the professionals about whether or not the idea of a daytime paid staff 
and then the ball and then work through a volunteer process after hours. What is the viability? Are we going to improve anything by doing that, or will we just have just be counting? We got daytime fires covered, but we don't have the nighttime fires covered. That's what we have. Okay. I don't think that's going to be the okay, because I would say that most of the fires that they have driven this discussion with the Stone Creek Fire and the ones we've had a recent memory. Um, we have more calls during the daytime hours, significantly, but we tend to have worse calls at night. So that's, that fire is Stone Creek at 2 o'clock in the morning. You, know, you could have had you know, four part time stations during the day, it would not have impacted any of that. That's right. Yeah. But in your opinion, a full time staff could have made, and I'm going to clear that up a little bit, could have or would have made a difference in that fire. The Stone Creek fire? Yes. Let's just use that as an example. So this is, this is the opinion of Court Nation based on the fact that from the time 911 received the call, dispatch, there was a sheriff's deputy that pulled up six and a half minutes after. Which six and a half minutes would have been probably the response time for a page station from the over. Six and a half minutes after that call came in 911, the dash cam video from that sheriff's car shut. You could not see a house. There was nothing. Believe us. Believe us. So in that case, so if, and that's why it's dangerous to use one instance as you know. In that particular instance, it would not have made a difference. Now there for. For everyone like that that it wouldn't have, there may be four or five that it would have. So having a full-time station would be a <clears throat> would improve things for the community, but you know, it would not have changed the outcome in that particular instance. Well that, that that's kind of been my conversation with some of the commissioners is that whatever we do, we, we want to be sure number one that we're not creating a false pretense with the citizens out there. Yes. And we're going to put their fire out and then we're going to get there before their house. And that was house That's not going to happen. So the, That's one, what I mean. the one variable that you all can't fund for policy into being different is the time from the time that spark lights until someone calls 911. That's the time that determines the outcome of the fire, not how fast the fire department is. So you have to be really careful what you put your priority on because I don't know how many times, probably every time, we have something that started as a grass fire that impacts the structure is because the grass fire got out and the people tried to put it out themselves before calling 911. So every grass fire season, we start to see that. We put out public messaging that says, if your grass fire gets out, call 911, then try to put it out yourself until the fire department gets there if that's what you want to do. But not the reverse order because that's when it spreads and then something's yeah, way yeah. more specific, you know, significant than it should be. Was the Stone Creek fire driven by weather? Wind? No, we didn't see no, it. Like no, sir. So one of the things, and that, that is, so when we do a fire report, there is a little column in there we track, you know, the national, they want to track patterns and things. And so it asks, you know, who moved factors that contributed to the spread or whatever. So one of the things that, um, based on the investigation, we, we believe contributed to spreading so fast was <clears throat> when when the fire alarm, smoke alarm goes off, and everybody's hollering, and fire get out of the house. Some of the people in the house, you just get out of the house quick, quick as you can. Some people ran out the back door. When you run out the door and the house on fire, you don't think about closing the house. Yet. So you got the back door. Somebody ran out the front door. Again, you're not closing up. So now you've created this wind tunnel. Because it, it wasn't like bad weather, but the wind was blowing. And so it's just like a, a chimney flue, you know, where there's things you see, you know, when they used to use the old flue. When you blow that air in there, it feeds that fire. And so it was a perfect storm. It may never happen again in our lifetime for a house fire in Alice County. But in that particular instance, everything lined up in the worst possible way contribute to that house station on fire and spreading so quickly. And so again, at the end of the day, the the blessing is that everybody did get out and nobody got hurt. Um, so you know unfortunately like I said six and a 
now he was late, but there was nothing anybody could say about the house. Yeah, two o'clock in the morning, you could have had him real lost in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the blessing was that they were able to get out. I think Chad, you know, like, stress my concern you know, wholeheartedly. You know, the, the second we, we talk about buying fire stations, and we talk about them paying perhaps two hundred dollars additional each year for their property tax or what have you. No matter what, it's increased in how much pain. So, but long story short, some people are going to be saying, "Well, I don't expect my house to burn down." You know, I know my house ain't going to burn down, and, and you know you don't want to paint that scenario out. But, but my, my my other concern is one that whatever we do is not kicking the can down the road. We have to come back next year. You know, to so what are we going to do to do it right? That's just my, my, my thought process. I agree with that. Uh, we, we talk about options. The chairman has stated his position. Currently, he favors option two. Mark, three. Option two. So that's the chairman's option two. You want three stations or you want the third option, which is four stations? The third option is four stations. My option is option two, which is three stations. Okay. Option two is three oh, stations? Flatville, Venus, and Northwest. Uh, yeah. I was three stations. Three stations. Three stations. Two. 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 Two.
we can't leave here today and say, ooh, we got through that. I mean, there is a stopgap. There, there are issues with volunteers. There's issues with response times that are, in my mind, that are absolutely unacceptable. Regardless of if they would have got there in six minutes and, 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 and or 25 minutes and, and would have you know, did it make a difference, could it make a difference, whatever. It's the perception that, that all that to say, we, we've got to do better. And, and we were all clear to say that nobody was, was disrespecting the volunteers or, or anything. It was just like, like Mr. Ashley said, a, a series of unfortunate events for that one particular case. But, but, but we've got to figure out something to, 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 to get us, to Stephanie's point, to, to carry us until we can implement something. You know what I'm saying? And I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, what we're doing here, number one, is that we, we are deciding and we're recognizing the fact that the citizens in this community demand, deserve a higher level of fire service. That process starts today to get to that higher level of service. But to get to option two and fully implemented, we can't, we can't give the perception into the community that that's going to, that next week we're going to be here because we're not. But there are issues that's ongoing that we all recognize, and I think everybody does, that we're going to have to continue to work and improve on what we currently have while we get there so that we can improve on that. Well, how long through the application process will it take us to hire 15 people, not 27, 15. Once we get the application I mean, how long would it take us to get 15 viable, hireable applicants? I think it's a question. A year, at least, probably. Yeah, probably. You know, the best, the best plan that would work is all the applicants would all agree to be firefighter one. There is talk out there amongst other departments. People still live here. Oh, I'll come back in a heartbeat. I, I, yeah, you, you, you hire five more, ten more, fifteen more to a service theater. I, I may have half of those already firefighter ones. But at that time, then they still got near. All right. I, preacher, I, I would really like, without putting pressure, I mean, and this is seriously, I'm not trying to throw pressure on anybody, but I would like to, to see some type of internal plan for what we can do immediately to, without having a major reaction to any of this. But what steps, what small steps can we do right now that ensure that, that we're better tomorrow than we, than we were today and better well, today than we were yesterday? Let me, let me express first and foremost that from the professional side, nobody, nobody would enjoy more than those firefighters seeing that response time <clears throat> lower. Nobody would be happier than them to have more equipment, more volunteers. All of those things that you said, that you said earlier, this is unacceptable. Now, acknowledgement of being unacceptable and how we make it acceptable is not a way of magic wand, and nor is there a single silver bullet. None of the things that are necessary are going to come quickly, nor are they going to come cheaply. Lloyd? Lloyd? So, for instance, if you say in this year's budget, instead of these 12, uh, we want you to begin the process to hire whatever, whatever number you now, we may not have all those, but Stephanie and I would have to look at, all right, how much money are we going to be able to set aside for this? We bring that to all of us and yes, we are committed to putting that much money in there. All right? Are we also committed to being able to go ahead and say we're going to put in orders for two more trucks, maybe three more trucks? Are you going to put them in and say, we will budget those for the years that they, we have to put money up front 
we will still pay more at the end of the when they are delivered, but you're going to have to earmark money for them. Those are things that you can do immediately. Now, Stephanie, Ashley, Lloyd, y'all chime in. Any, anything more than that? Yeah, I mean, for the last four or five years, we've been so. And I'm not, I'm not going to separate between pay and volunteers because it applies to both. Because you know, Lloyd and I and here, we, when it comes to equipment, and you know, there's certain things that we don't, you know, volunteers, their timelines we can't expect as much, but we don't treat them any different as far as our expectations, as far as professionalism, or what we give them as far as equipment. So our people have the best training, the most opportunities for training. They have in in some cases, they have their safety equipment as like we've given them uh, more and better equipment than they've had in recent memory. We've already established they get paid for, for volunteers and they, they get a bigger stipend than anywhere else. So they still sort of grasp of those straws, but at some point it gets to where, okay, you, we've done from a volunteer standpoint getting more volunteers, at, at the end of the day, you can think about care, but it's up to them to, to, to grab it. And then as far as hiring people, um, you know, we have made some changes in the way we recruit people. And I, I think, um, and Lloyd, you feel free to, to correct me if you feel differently, but the last few firefighters we have um, have been some of the best hires we've had in, in recent years. Um, and a lot of that is, I think, because in the past, we limited ourselves, okay, you've got to have everything, so that your first day on the job, you're ready to go in the truck and respond to the fire. And so we opened it up to other members of the community and said, you know what, I'd really love to serve as a firefighter, but I don't have that firefighter one, I don't have that EMR. And so we hired some good people and sent them, you know, had a desire, and, um, and had some of the background we were looking for, sent them up to Forsyth, got them trained. Um, but the story that you're probably tired of hearing me recount is the, the last um, hiring process we went through, um, we had one position. We had 24 applicants, which is the most applicants we've had that I've known since we've been in the hires. We had 24 people that applied to earn an application. We had 21 of them show up to actually take a written test. By the time we got done with the written test and the physical test that's required, uh, we had 10 people we could interview. So let's just say, so we're looking at option one, we got 50 people. Um, and if I hired everybody, if I just said, you know what, they're not even doing interviews, I'm going to hire all 10 of them. We got like six, what I consider six. There were probably six of those 10 that after me and Lloyd and Gary and some of the paid staff we currently have, we did the interview process, evaluated them. We said, you know what, they were probably make a good firefighter in Mount's County. Um, so that was four of them. But we just had, so it, that kind of goes to the point of why it's going to take us a little bit longer. Um, because one of the philosophies that, that we kind of take on is, you know, yes, we want to provide more service, but if we're just taking more bodies, how much service we're really providing. So we're, we're trying to balance that, you know, okay, you don't have to be like the tip-top NBA, NFL stars, um, but we also want somebody that's going to bring something to the table. And so that's the challenge that, that we face. You know, same thing with volunteers. We have how many volunteers do you think we have? How many people do you think we have come to turn an application every week here? Two to three. Two to three per week. And I, I mean, I, I truly get the challenges that we're facing. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, we're not trying with all our might. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that. I just have to assume that. But what I'm saying, though, is how, if we have to rely on volunteers for at least two to three years, and we have to basically keep things as they are. How are we ensured that people are going to show up to the station?
ask you, and I know it all goes back to what you were just trying to describe to me, but, but how do we make sure that, that we don't have no volunteers show up to, to a fire, any, regardless of where that is? I mean, do we, that's, that's, do we, that's, it. that's a tough deal. But, but I mean, can we talk, can we pull them all together as a, as a collective group and say, you're reliable, you know, and you, at your station, but we want to, can you, can you fill in over here temporarily? Can we talk to Hey Hire and do an auto aid agreement temporarily? Can we? So can I? So that we get Well, and I was just, Scotty had gotten there before I had my opportunity. But I just want to, I think what Scotty is really looking at right now, he used the term earlier, stop gap until we can get option two up and running. Um, and I think that that is a concern. Um, and, but it's, it's multifaceted. We've got to try to see if we can improve our volunteer process. Whatever there is there that we, that we identify as an issue, we need to try to work that and gel that together. I think we're headed there. That's processing. Auto aid, uh, you know, I'm, hey, Howard, probably okay. I do know that we had a meeting with the mayor and the city council, and they had a concern about just the ones that they were doing mutual aid calls on. Not just all the way. They were concerned about it. So, and, and, and this is kind of in, in my philosophy with mutual aid. So, um, hey, hire, they actually they only have two people at the station. So it's not like they have a four or five person. So they have two people. And my concern has always been, okay, if we need help, then we call and ask them, but I also am cognizant of the fact that I'm now pulling their protection from that higher. So what I've always instructed Lloyd and everybody to do is when we get a call, I look at it, okay, what if that was my family? Now if it's if it's not, so I've told them if it's life safety, um, you know, if there's somebody that's laying there bleeding, somebody's in a bad car wreck, and they're trapped, House is on fire. Um, those are high priority. We need to do whatever we can to save life and property. So don't be afraid to call Hey Hire. We call the city of Alabasta. Um, we have Lake Park. Um, so we have good relationships and good mutual aid with them. But then I also caution them don't abuse that. So if it's just an accident and nobody's really hurt bad, you know. We're not going to call them just because it's going to take us a while to get there. It's not a true, you know, everything is an emergency of the person to call. But we try to be judicious of the way we use that um, so that it is in those extreme life safety circumstances. And, and I'll be honest, you know, I've never, um, you know, despite any other issues, you know, Dwight Bennett, the chief of Hayhire, uh, chief of Bible, the city of Alasta, when we call and ask them, I mean, they, they're grateful for it. Um, they're like, hey, you know, if there's somebody that needs help and we can get there in five minutes, it's going to take you 10. Let us go help them. Because they look at the same way, you know, uh, when it, if you're sitting and bleeding in your car and you flip your car, you really don't care what the side of the truck says on yeah, it. You just want somebody to show up and say, I hear that. Mr. Scott, I'm working on your question that will be approved. Started the station on Monday night. We have a staff meeting for their officers to come and meet with myself and Gary. Uh, as I was meeting with the first half of the county, I invited everybody, not just the chief officer or whoever his designee was. I want everybody in there so I can get everybody's input. So I'm hoping that's a start. That's a you know foot in the door. So. Um, but what I would like to ask, and if I'm out of, out of order, out of line, we're looking at 18 months for whatever options the commission decides. But somewhere down that 18 months line, when do we order the trucks, knowing it's a year out, when do we hire to send the people to an eight weeks class so that at the end of that 18 months, are we stepping into the station? With, this, with a fire truck, or we just now start the process? 
if there was something he couldn't handle, then of course he brings it on up to admin. So yes, it's a possibility. <coughs> if they are volunteers, you have that. Okay, I can go talk. I can go talk to people because I, I, I've known him and I, I volunteer with whatever you know. Hey, let's put Chad there. I don't, I don't keep doing what I'm doing. So it could. Well, my, my concern is again is try to coordinating and creating a better situation for the citizens. And if you've got a coordinated effort to coordinate your volunteers for their volunteer effort, it appears to me like you would have something that you could rely on much better. Rather than the bell ringing and you don't really know who's going to respond. I think what we're doing now is that we're doing this because of lower of response times. We're now calling out just about everybody at one time to go to one flight. If we so got, not at one time. Yes, There's, yes we are. There, we are yeah. Yeah. If we yeah. got a fire in South Lambs County, we're we're calling out yes. every volunteer we've got right now to go to South Lambs. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. If a volunteer in the North Lambs rolls out of his bed, gets to his truck, he's down the road and it is turns out to be a smaller situation that somebody else is already there. We got it under control. Teacher so, uh, Dr. Oh, oh, oh. So to, to your point, I mean there's actually technology that we looked at, but here's the issue. So the reason that we're paying everybody out is so everybody in the south end of the county, let's say that fire, everybody in the south end of the county is getting that payment. And they're, they're not sure, they're basically saying, I can't come. That wouldn't change if you had the volunteer coordinator, because this is what I, this is the reason we haven't like, gotten the app or something where they can just, hey, you sign if you're available, and then we can look at a board and say, okay, we've got 12 people available. Well, they have a tendency, this is all across the, the book, I mean, this is human nature. I'm not going to, I'm scared to, click on that I'm available because then if I click that I'm available and I'm in the middle of something and they get a call and I don't go, I mean what are we gonna uh, so then so if they call around and say, hey are you available today between 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. for calls and I say yes I don't show up. So what what's my recourse? Okay, they told me told me he was available and he didn't show up. Well I get that I'm sorry. The reason, and you and I had a conversation with Dan on the why this, this happened. How long ago did we start this? Or paid you? Here? We started uh, five months ago, actually. And the purpose of that began with. <clears throat> so, what we were having is we originally had the two closest districts got paged out, and I've one district. Um, well, the way the dispatchers knew which two districts to page out is the CAD gave them recommendations. They said, okay, this fire, you page out District 1 and 2. Well, we were having a lot of issues with the CAD was not giving them the recommendations. So they had to, based on their memory, oh, oh crap, which, which two districts do I need? So they were either just dispatching one district. And then taking a few minutes to figure out who needed to be the backup to send them, or they were guessing and saying, "Okay, I think this should be District One and District Three, and really should be One and Two. And so we're like, "You know what? Let's make it easier on the dispatchers, so that they don't have to. because it's, it was stressful on them because they want to get it 100% right every time, and it was really stressing them out when we call them and say, "Hey, you know, you page that wrong district, can you page out this?" One? This, this was not designed to be insensitive to any of the volunteers. The purpose was to go back to what Sean said, how do we have the highest level of service available in the county? Yes? Yeah, Mark. How many of you say you're a 